The Jonski is a YouTube channel run by and run for people over the age of 13. People under the age of 13 should click off of this video right now or watch with a parent or guardian. Viewer discretion is advised. You don't scare me! <laughs> Milt is freaking to name Militiaman. My name is King Prime and welcome back to another video here on the YouTube channel. Today we are going to be once again just striving a bit away from what we've usually been doing with the Star Wars reviews, the Halo reviews, even a few Transformers reviews and Fortnite reviews sprinkled in here. Today we're going to be doing another unboxing or an unbagging or whatever the hell I call these. Recently, a custom LEGO printing company called United Bricks, based in Scotland, had an exclusive weekend where they released a bunch of military history minifigures that you could, of course, buy that were all exclusive that were limited edition. So, I, of course, being the schmuck I am, the one who's irresponsible with my money, bought a lot of them. <laughs> and that is what we are going to be taking a look at today. We have a shipment here from the United Kingdom that we are going to take a look at that I think will be of great interest not only to you, but to me, and also to the clout that I'm going to get from putting United Bricks' logo on the thumbnail of this video. Thanks, guys! <laughs> but without further ado, I, I haven't even looked inside of this package yet. I've just sort of uh, torn off my address and torn it open, so let's get into it and see if we can... See, yep, there we go. We have one, do I feel one, two, two little packages full of minifigures. Let's see exactly what we got. So first I'll go with the small package and we will zoom in here as I take a look at the contents of it. So first I'm going to pull out a dark uniform. This looks to be a French Senegalese Trillier from the First World War, I believe. On his tunic, you have some very nice detailing indeed. You have a, uh, I, wouldn't, I don't know if you'd call that a bolo or a tanto knife printed on there, but it's very nice. You have the French, very small, but incredibly noticeable still, French colonial sigils sewn onto his uh, collar, as well as some gold piping to indicate what I believe is rank. Same thing here, you have a uh, either a rank or a service stripe, I'm not sure. He has straps going all the way around his back, and of course, another ammo pouch back there. You have his uh, canteen and his mess tin that are on his side there, as well as some puttees and some yellow piping on the side of his leg. And his boot there goes, of course, all the way around, 360 printing, even under the arms, which is very nice. There's a uh, French gas mask, awesome as always. The uh, dark reddish-brown skin tone to indicate, you know, colonial troops. And a silver Adrian helmet. So first minifigure, very nice. I'll have to get a labelle for this guy here and, uh, and, and be able to arm him up very nicely. So there we have our first of the minifigures of this haul. Next, we're going to pull out another minifigure here. And who is this? This looks to be a World War I Belgian soldier, I believe. I'm not quite sure. The main way I'm identifying these is by their equipment. And this is a Belgian ammo pouch. Uh, it's, it goes all the way around the, the waist there. Uh, the printing, of course, like I said previously, is full 360 all the way around. You can have the mess kit on his back, as well as a little bedroll and a cornister wrapped up there, which is very nice. The detailing is, is always fantastic. Some nice laced up boots there. And a printed helmet strap that attaches to the Silver Adrian. So this is our second World War I figure of the batch. Very nice indeed. So we have two World War I figures so far. And our final figure for this bag is going to be the, whoa, that's interesting. And new to me, this looks to be the War of 1812 uh, American or U.S. Army soldier, which is very nice. I don't have any War of 1812 figures, uh, and this is my first one. He has some very, uh, very deep sideburns there, as you can tell. He's, he's, he's definitely uh, grown them out for a few, a few days. Detail on his collar, the, of course, the red, white, and blue that we are used to for uh, turn-of-the-century American soldiers. Very nice all around. Even the sewn detail on the facing on his cuffs there. 
You have a nice U.S. tornister as well as his ammunition box and other gear like his canteen on his back. Of course, his coattails are actually printed onto his legs, which is a very nice detail as well. And the white belt continues all the way around. The satchel there was all the way around. So, you know, even though it's 2D printed, this guy is fully geared up for war. And that is very nice, of course. The Shaco is not printed or anything, but it is still there, which is very nice. Overall, this is a beautiful looking minifigure. And uh, one I'm very happy to have, because I didn't have any War of 1812 minifigures before this one. So I'm happy to have this in the collection. So we have now uh, one African soldier, one European, and one American. That brings us to bag number two. And there are many... Many more minifigures to go in this sort of unboxing that we're going to do here as I struggle with this bag. So first of all, first thing I'm going to pull out is the brick badge that you get for Weekend Blitz, which is the event's name. I failed to pronounce it correctly earlier, but that's what it is called. Uh, this is my second one. I have one for Weekend Blitz 3, and I think you get this if you spend like over um, $40, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I spent way more than that, so... I got one of these, which is good, so I have that printed piece in my collection now, which is very nice, but what is also in my collection now is the next minifigure, which is looking to be, let me just unbag him here, but I already know who this is, our World War I Portuguese soldier with a very nice OD green Brody helmet uh, in in standing in for the uh, Portuguese helmet, which is not yet existing, as far as I'm aware, in Brick Arms. So overall, this figure is very nice. He has a Portuguese tunic, you can tell because of the high collar right there that is printed on, as well as the British equipment that he's using. The bayonet attached to his leg. All, yep, completely British kit, except for the tunic, which is Portuguese model. Has some very nice uh, mud printing on the putties and his boots as well. Very nice. So this is going to bring us to three World War I figures and one War of 1812 figure for the lot. So that's very, very interesting. Let's put him with his compatriots down there. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a big day for the Entente uh, forces in my collection. Because I do have quite a, a few of them that I remember I ordered. Next up on the ballot, however, we do have another minifigure here from the American side of things. That being the Boxer Rebellion, a uh, United States Marine. Let me get his hat on there real quick. And he looks absolutely fantastic. He actually looks a little bit familiar. I know a guy who looks just like this. I wonder if there's any resemblance there. But he has a nice uh, Marine Corps belt there. With the two pouches on either side that go around there. It's sort of like the, the blend between 20th century uh, canvas pouches and the 19th century um, leatherworks, which is very nice indeed. Of course, you have uh, suspenders holding those up as well on the straps. Red piping for his tunic. Light, there are very light blue pants, as well as a bayonet there. Some gaiters around his boots. And that's about it for that minifigure, but very nice indeed. I don't have any Box Rebellion minifigures, so this just adds another to the force of uh, my American military history collection, which is now uh, growing exponentially, and I presume will grow even more by the end of this video. Speaking of American military forces, our next minifigure is, if you can believe it, a World War I American Doughboy uh, Browning Automatic Rifle Gunner, or Bar Gunner. Anyway, here is the Bar Gunner himself. He's looking very smug there with his, his little grin. He has the walking fire belt that we rarely see ever in person, but that I've seen uh, exists where you're supposed to put the buttstock of the rifle into this little uh, metal clip here, and you're supposed to walk forward with it. It was called Walking Fire. You can look it up on YouTube. He also has a pouch there for, for 1911 magazines, and on his side he has a 1911 in a brown leather holster. On the other side he just has regular pouches for the Browning Automatic Rifle, which are larger pouches of course. 
There's his canteen on his hip. Over here we have what I what I know are supposed to be service stripes. These are supposed to be either wound or service stripes. I'm then and they are neither. These look like upside down rank stripes. Same thing with this one. So I very interesting. I'm just continue on before I before I get myself into too much of a confusion. There's his haversack with the uh, shovel attached as well. He has buddies and move it on before my uh, my brain melts. This minifigure, of course, also comes with a Brick Arms Browning Automatic Rifle, which he can hold like so. And he can walk and fire like the, uh, the manuals taught him to. So we'll put this guy right over there. And that's how that's coming along. Next in the bag, we have a, another European soldier, believe it or not. It's from, you guessed it, World War I. And we have a... Come on, let's get him out of here. A French Shoshaw gunner. You can see he has the brown leather Shoshaw um, magazine pouches on his harness there, as well as what I believe to be a cleaning kit for that. The belt goes all the way around. You have a canteen just in the same place where as the uh, Senegalese Troilier had it. On the back, you have a, another single magazine pouch. On his legs, you have the printed overcoat, which continues down onto his legs, of course, like I said earlier. And his putties, which are tied up nice and tight there, and some mud on his black boots, which is very nice looking. I just wish this figure would have also come with a machine gun like the bar gunner did, but I understand it's harder to get a show shell than a browning automatic rifle and brick arms, so yes, I understand. I get it. No need to complain to me. I, I do get it. Also on his face, he does have a printed on chin strap for his helmet, which is very nice. And that is that. So we'll put him right over there next to his uh, colonial comrade, the Trialier. And continuing on, we have, oh boy, could you believe it, another American military figure. This time we have the American Civil War Union Soldier, which looks absolutely fantastic. One thing I'm noticing immediately is that this is a custom printed Kepi piece. This is not the Lego Kepi that we are used to. This is completely a completely custom printed element with some nice detailing like uh, fabric on there. Let's put that on his head again. And zoom in just a little bit more so you can get some details. So you do have, of course, the federal blue uniform with the different accoutrements of an American soldier of the Civil War, such as the bayonet there. You have the eagle on his harness for his ammo box, which should be on his back. Yep, there it is with the U.S. marking. His canteen there, his torn store and bedroll. So here we have nothing but the straps for the canteen. And we do have these two stripes on his... Uh, sleeves, which I'm not quite sure. I don't think that they are rank stripes, but they very well could be. I'm just not sure. His tunic is also printed onto his legs, so you can see there's just a little bit of carryover there, as well as some nice fabric detail. His boots are tucked into in what I presume to be either gaiters or socks. I'm not quite sure. It could be either, but they are, they are very nicely printed regardless, and this figure is awesome. Definitely not my favorite one of the, the group, but I'm very happy that I got it regardless. And our final minifigure for this haul is actually going to be, if you can believe it, another American military history uh, minifigure. This time, however, we have a Continental Army soldier with a tricorn hat. Let's zoom in a little bit. So immediately right off the bat, I can tell that he has some nice yellow facing on his overcoat there as well as the piping on his sleeves. There are straps that are going across his chest to carry his bayonet and his ammo box there, as well as a strap for his canteen, which just hangs back there. His coattails, just like the War of 1812 soldier, is printed onto his legs, and his pant legs are covering his shoes so that you can't really see them, as was the style for militaries in the late 18th century, but overall that looks fantastic. Uh, no hair printing or anything, you know, uh, it would have been nice to at least just had something in the back here so that he wasn't uh, like completely 
<laughs> bald, like totally. But you know, it's still nice, and I like the tricorn. So absolutely fantastic minifigure. Other than that, I do love this guy. And this is my first Rev War minifigure as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to conclude the Weekend Blitz 5 haul. I love <laughs> this is a this is sort of a secret addiction of mine. I am absolutely obsessed with these um, military history minifigures. They are absolutely awesome. Uh I love United Bricks, TMC, Brick Mania, all those guys that do the custom Lego minifigures uh, for military history. I love my World War I history, and I love my American history, so I collect both of these things pretty religiously. And I'm so happy that there are, there are companies out here like United Bricks and other such uh, Lego manufacturers keeping that history alive and teaching the next generation about the past and the conflicts of the past, what people have had to go through in order to get us to where we are now. And I think that's a super, super important mission. And I think that this is such a great medium in which to do it. And also a great medium in which to lose a lot of money because this was not a cheap order. So make sure, my friends, if you like military history, if you like these custom Lego minifigures, if you like any of this stuff, you know, United Bricks or Brickmania, Mox, Lego Community, if you're an AFOL, if you're a TFOL, make sure you share this video with all your friends, all your Facebook groups, all your Instagram buddies, whatever have you. If you like the content, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to make sure that we, that we keep these videos coming. It's going to be pretty much it for this video, my friends. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, peace.